Hi everyone, this is Yashvi and you are watching my YouTube channel. In the last video, we talked about RNN and some of its disadvantages. If you haven't watched it yet, then please go and watch it first before proceeding to this video. So let's get started. RNN, which is also called vanilla RNN. There are two major problems with RNN, exploiting gradients and vanishing gradient. Exploiting gradient arises when gradient become too large. And vanishing gradient arises when gradient become too small. Now let's see the solution to the problem. So for the exploiting gradient, we can use the gradient clipping. In this, we clip gradients to a small number when they started to exploit. That is, whenever they reach a certain threshold, we set it to a small number. In this image, uh, where the left hand side image is the without clipping and the right hand side image is with clipping. Now let's see the solution to the vanishing gradient problem. There are two solutions to the vanishing gradient problem, LSTMs and GRUs. We will talk about both today. First, let's discuss LSTMs, which is long short term memory. The basic idea of LSTM is to remember some information and to forget some information. LSTMs can read, erase and update information. In LSTM, for any timestamp T, there is one hidden state H and cell state C and the current input state X. Cell state in LSTM are like memory blocks which stores information. Let's say some person is appreciating your work. So you will remember words like awesome, good going, keep it up. You may not remember the exact line, right? Similarly, LSTM will remember some information and forget some information. Now we are cleared with basic in intuition behind LSTM. Now understand it, how it works. It is looking so much complicated right now, but believe me, it is not that complicated as it looks like. I have taken images from the famous blog by Christopher Ola. I have included the link in the description. You should definitely check this out. In LSTM, the information flows from the state line by forgetting some information by this operation and by adding some information by this operation and outputting some information. So we will understand each of these operations one by one. Okay, the first gate is forget gate. Forget gate controls how much information from the old state should be forgotten. That is to removing some information from the previous cell state. So information that is no longer needed will that is less important removed via this pointwise operation. Let's say there is a sentence Anna goes to sleep while her sister working on her blank space. When Anna goes to sleep finishes while her sister the that subject changes to her sister we need we need not information about Anna who goes to sleep for predicting this word. We need the information about her system, which is working on something. So it can be a project, it can be PPT or anything. So by using this forget gate, we will forget this information and concentrate on this information. So this gate takes two input, XT, which is our cur current input and HT minus one, which is our previous hidden state. Uh, both are multiplied by it corresponding weights and add it together and send it to the sigmoid function. And then we get our FT, which is a forget gate. Sigmoid function decides which values to keep and which values to not. Zero means forget it completely. One means not to forget. Now the next gate is the input gate and new memory cell. Let's say we have a sentence, Tina knows programming. She told me over the phone that she had a three years experience. Important thing here is Tina knows programming and she had a three years experience. The She told me over the phone is not important. Input gate is responsible for addition of the new information. That is how much of the new information should be added. It takes XT and previous hidden state HT minus one uh, multiplied by corresponding weights, adding them together and pass it to the sigmoid function. Then we get our input gate result. The new memory cell denoted by CT bar takes the input XT 
and the previous hidden state ht minus 1 multiply by its corresponding weights and adding them together and applying 10h function which squishes output into minus 1 to 1. The new memory cell output and the input gate output are multiplied together depicting how much of the new information is important to us. Like in our case, the new information is she told me over the phone that she had a three years experience. In this, she told me over the phone is not important to us. We, are, we have only important thing is she had a three years experience. Final memory cell is generated by forgetting some of the past information and adding some of the new information. CT is denoted by FT with pointwise operation with CT minus one, that is previous cell state plus input state point, with pointwise operation with CT bar, which is our new memory generated. And then our final gate, which is our output gate. The purpose of this gate is to separate final memory from the output. CT contains lot of information, right? That is not necessary required to save in the hidden state. This gate decides what parts of the CT is to be presented into the hidden state. This is done by taking the input state and the hidden state multiply by its corresponding weights, add them together and applying sigmoid function and multiply it with the 10, 10H, 10H of CT, which is our cell state. And this HT will be passed to the next LSTM cell. Adding all of this operation together will be XT, which is our current input state, HT minus 1, which is our previous hidden state, CT minus 1, which is our previous cell state. We are forgetting some of the information from the previous cell state, which is not important. Updating some of the information by this operation and outputting some information. Now we understood the LSTM. Now let's understand the GRUs, which is gated recurrent units. Gated recurrent units, that is GRU, is very much similar to LSTM. In fact, it simplifies LSTM with lesser number of parameters. Remember that intuition of making GRU is same as of LSTM. There are two gates. One is reset gate and the other one is update gate. There is no cell state in GRUs. GRUs use hidden state to transfer the information. Let's understand how. The first gate is reset gate. Reset gate is similar to forget gate. That is what information to remove from the previous hidden state. It takes current input and previous hidden state multiplied by its corresponding weights, adding them together and applying sigmoid function. The purpose of the update gate is how much of the new information is to be passed along. It takes current input state and the previous hidden state multiplied by its corresponding weights, adding them together and passing it to the sigmoid function. New memory cell, which is denoted by HT bar, which is using the reset gate to store only relevant information. And the final memory step denoted by H of T, left hand side operation decide what information from the previous step to be passed along and what in right hand side operation decides what information from the current state should be passed. And adding them together, we will get our HT, which will be passed to the next GRU unit. So now the question is, which one is better, LSTM or GRU? There is no clear winner, which is better and which is not. GRU have fewer parameters than LSTM, so it may train a bit faster or it may need less data to generalize. But if you have enough data, then LSTM may lead to better results. So this is it for today. If you liked my video, then please do not forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Until then, bye-bye.